Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to welcome you and to thank you for coming to Stony Brook University today for this very special event. Today we will hear announcements about not one, but two critical investments in Stony Brook University and in the state of New York. They are each historic, but together they are truly transformational, and I believe they mark a new beginning for Stony Brook's next 50 years. Here to help us celebrate and receive our heartfelt thanks are the top leaders from the state and the State University of New York. New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo, who is here to help us thank the Simons and make one of the announcements. And we are proud to have with us today New York State Assembly Representatives Steve Engelbright and Mike Fitzpatrick. Thank you for being here. Also here from the New York State Assembly are Senator Lee Zeldin, Assemblyman Charles Levine, Assemblyman Daniel LaSquadro, Assemblyman David McDonnell, Assemblyman Ed Ra, Assemblyman Phil Ramos, Assemblyman Thomas McKivitt, uh, uh, Assemblyman Carl Hasty, uh, as well as Suffolk County Legislator Vivian Valoria Fisher and Suffolk County Legislator-elect Kara Hahn and Town of Brookhaven Councilman Steve Fiore Rosenfeld. Please join me in thanking all of these elected officials for coming today. I see our newly appointed chairman of the State University of New York Board of Trustees, H. Carl McCall is here. Chairman, welcome. And SUNY Board of Trustee member, Carrie Stoller. Carrie, always good to see you. The chancellor of the State University of New York, Nancy Zimfer. Also here is Kevin Law, President of the Long Island Association, Chairman of the Stony Brook Council. And I'm very proud to add a Stony Brook alum. Kevin, it's always nice to have you back on campus. The words historic, landmark, groundbreaking have been bantered about quite a lot recently when you hear talk people talking about Governor Andrew Cuomo and what he has accomplished so far in his inaugural year, and rightfully so. Governor Cuomo has successfully overseen the redesign of Medicaid, rent control renewal, ethics reform, a property tax cap, and he got same-sex marriage passed. Historic, landmark, groundbreaking indeed. Just last week he did it again concluding the initial phase of a groundbreaking economic development initiative, signing off on $785 million in economic development funding through regional councils. Stony Brook is fortunate to have participated in Long Island's plan, which was one of four selected for more than $100 million in funding. Kevin Law co-chaired that effort and deserves a hearty congratulations for his hard work and leadership. For Stony Brook and the State University of New York, Governor Cuomo's greatest legacy, so far, is the passage of SUNY 2020 legislation, another landmark economic development initiative that will also enhance academic quality at SUNY schools and at Stony Brook. Fueled by his vision and driven by his support and that of Chancellor Zimfer, SUNY 2020, a rational, predictable tuition program which protects the most economically challenged students with a tuition credit, gave all 64 SUNY campuses a reason for optimism. It bolsters SUNY schools with an annual $300 tuition increase for five years with a provision for maintenance of effort so we can reinvest in academic programs and remove the threat of spikes in tuition that have been so prevalent over the years. It also provided the four university centers, Stony Brook, Buffalo, Binghamton, and Albany, with an opportunity to compete for $35 million in challenge grant capital funding. All four institutions were divided to, invited to develop a plan that would spur economic development and advance their academic and research missions at the same time. Stony Brook's plan envisioned an investment in a high-tech medical research translation facility that would help create thousands of new jobs in the community resources for new faculty hires and programming, and equipment which would enable us to focus on cancer research and clinical care. 
SUNY 2020 could not have happened without the support of Majority Leader Dean Skelos, Speaker Sheldon Silver, Representative Higher Education Committee Chair Senator Ken Laval and Assemblywoman Deborah Glick, as well as our district champions John Flanagan, Steve Engelbright, and Mike Fitzpatrick, and many others here today. At Stony Brook, revenue for SUNY 2020 will benefit all of our students as we invest in new faculty hires, provide new research opportunities, reduce class size, and reduce time to degree. Our goal is no fewer than 250 new faculty over the next five years. But we are not forgetting Stony Brook's vital mission of providing access to excellence for economically disadvantaged students. We are investing a portion of this revenue into merit-based student scholarships and financial aid that will hold students from families making under $75,000 a year harmless from the tuition increase. So Stony Brook will now offer the most generous financial aid package of any of the SUNY campuses. As the Stony Brook delegation presented our SUNY 2020 challenge grant application to Governor Cuomo and a host of officials in Albany last spring, it was clear that the governor truly understood the vital role that university centers play for the state in training our future leaders and in generating an innovation economy. He understood that an investment in Stony Brook, an investment in SUNY, an invest is an investment in the economic future of the state of New York. Thank you again, Governor, for being here to make a special announcement about Stony Brook SUNY 2020 application and to acknowledge with us the remarkable generosity of Jim and Marilyn Simons and the Simons Foundation. This commitment from the state, along with the Simons gift, will renew and rejuvenate our institution in a groundbreaking, historic way. Now it is my honor and great privilege to announce a remarkable $150 million gift to Stony Brook University from Jim and Marilyn Simons and the Simons Foundation. This gift represents a milestone moment for our young institution and something in which we can all celebrate. It will provide Stony Brook University with infinite possibilities. It gives Stony Brook the financial capacity to fulfill our potential and reach unparalleled heights in the areas of research, education, and discovery. It is a historic gift, the largest ever to Stony Brook University, the largest ever to public education in the state of New York, and among the top 10 gifts ever to a public university. Marilyn and Jim, we are deeply grateful for your support and the trust you have placed in Stony Brook University. With your immense generosity, you have already touched every facet of our campus. We, we will now be able to accelerate our trajectory of excellence. As a result of your gift, I can now say with great conviction that we were truly on the path of becoming a top 25 research university. And how great is it that one of the world's most accomplished investors is actually investing in Stony Brook University? Jim, thank you. But I have to tell you, when you ask Jim and Marilyn Simons, and remember she has a PhD in economics, to invest $150 million, you better have a concrete, well thought out concept that's going to earn a return on that investment. So we work with the Simons to reimagine Stony Brook. We put together a set of initiatives that will show an immediate return on their investment and have a dramatic impact on Stony Brook University today and well beyond for generations to come. No research university today can achieve greatness without strength in the life sciences. The Simons gift will enable Stony Brook to transform the School of Medicine with a robust investment in several initiatives to supplement and expand our life sciences programs. Its first impact was perhaps the most important. The promise of this gift and its transformative power enabled us to recruit Kenneth Kashansky, MD, one of the world's leading medical researchers, clinicians, and educators to come to Stony Brook as a senior vice president for the health sciences and dean of the School of Medicine. Ken, please stand up. Under Ken's guidance, we have identified our greatest opportunities, those that would have the most impact across the university and which also address three of the most important health issues of our time. They are the neurosciences, infectious diseases, and cancer. 
Specifically, the Simons Gift will allow us to invest in these areas, recruiting and retaining the best and brightest researchers and clinicians to help us generate new knowledge, new treatments, and new cures for these diseases. We will build one of the best neurosciences institutes in the world to tackle diseases like Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, ALS, stroke, autism, and schizophrenia and addiction. We will have an NCI-designated cancer center on Long Island where patients can have access to the latest therapies and the best scientists and physicians come, to come together to understand and defeat this deadly disease. And the university where the causative agent of Lyme disease was discovered will again be preeminent in the fight against infectious diseases. And the Simons Gift will enable us to invest in the enabling tools to perform this research and provide better clinical care. It will provide for major efforts in genomics, biomedical informatics, and imaging, all of which will help scientists throughout the university in multiple disciplines. It will allow us to more effectively leverage our incredible strengths in computer science, mathematics, chemistry, psychology, and physics, and our vital partnerships with Brookhaven National Laboratory and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. These are vitally important initiatives, and these researchers and clinicians will want and deserve a state-of-the-art facility to pursue their work. Using a portion of the Simons gifts and with the critical matching components from the state from Stony Brook SUNY 2020 plan, if it's approved, um, we will build a new state-of-the-art facility called the Medical and Research Translation Building, which we call the MART. The MART is at the hub of both the Simons Gift and the SUNY 2020 Capital Plan. It provides a tangible example of Stony Brook's commitment to teaching and research in the life sciences and enhancing clinical care. This new state-of-the-art facility will enable us to attract and support outstanding faculty, provide space to grow our existing cancer center, and house our new Center for Biological Imaging. A true public-private partnership, the MART will be an eight-level, 250,000-square-foot building with 25 research labs, a 30-room cancer uh, center clinic, 30-station clinical infusion center, a 300-seat auditorium, and new classrooms for teaching students. This will be the first new research-intensive building built on the Stony Brook Health Sciences campus in more than 30 years, and it will be magnificent. But the Simons Gift will impact far more than the School of Medicine. Jim and Marilyn recognize that the fundamental strength of Stony Brook University is its people, our human capital, and investment in outstanding faculty through endowed professorships and in graduate and undergraduate students through fellowship and scholarship programs can and will be truly transformational for us. So $50 million from the Simons Gift will provide support in the form of challenge grant funding over the next seven years for endowed professorships, graduate student fellowships, and merit-based undergraduate scholarships. This will dramatically impact our ability to recruit and retain the brightest minds in our country and from around the world to study, teach, and do their research here across all disciplines. But we're not done. The Simon Gifts also serves as a catalyst to energize the university alumni to give back to their alma mater. One million dollars has been set aside to match first-time gifts to Stony Brook from alumni. So I now say to all of Stony Brook's alumni, friends, and supporters, there has never been a better time to invest in Stony Brook University. Your gift can have twice the impact thanks to Jim and Marilyn's extraordinary generosity. And finally, on a personal note, my wife Ellen and I would like to express our deepest gratitude to Jim and Marilyn for their friendship, guidance, and support over the last two and a half years. I have no doubt that this investment will prove to be a seminal moment in Stony Brook history, and it is our great privilege to, privilege to be a part of it. Now I'd like to invite Assemblyman Steve Engelbright to the podium to say a few words. Steve has been a staunch advocate for Stony Brook for nearly two decades. His academic background and work in the physical sciences make him uniquely qualified to represent a top research university. As he has done with so many issues, on SUNY 2020, Steve's strong and supportive voice was consistently heard in Albany. Ladies and gentlemen, our Assemblyman, Steve Engelbright. Thank you, President Stanley. I would like to join President Stanley in welcoming everyone here to Suffolk County today and uh, in thanking uh, Jim and Marilyn Simons for their generosity and vision. And uh, speaking of vision, Governor, it's wonderful uh, to have you with us here today as well. Over the past year, working together with the governor, we have shown that government can get things done here in New York State. And as Washington may be mired in gridlock, here in New York, both parties have come together in a bipartisan fashion to work for the people 
of this great state. And for much of this turnaround, we credit the leadership of Governor Cuomo. The SUNY 2020 legislation passed by the legislature in June with the encouragement of the governor is designed to transform our public education institutions and help SUNY continue its role as a leading engine for our state's economic recovery. By approving Stony Brook's plan, Governor Cuomo is launching a new chapter here on Long Island and giving Chancellor Zimfer and President Stanley the tools they need to make sure Stony Brook leads the charge in rebuilding Long Island's economy. This plan has the potential to create thousands of jobs right here in our community and to help advance our region's economic vitality and strength. The governor's bottom-up, regionally specific approach to economic development is working, particularly it is working here on Long Island. And I look forward to continuing to work together with the governor, my colleagues in the legislature, and Stony Brook University as we get our state back on track. Thanks to all who helped make this day possible. It's now my privilege to introduce my friend and colleague from the New York State Senate, Senator Lee Zeldin. Well, welcome to Stony Brook. Welcome back to Suffolk County, Governor Cuomo. Uh, it's so great to be here. Uh, as a SUNY graduate myself, um, it's what better place to be right now than, uh, than before you. What a privilege and honor to be asked to be standing in front of you. Uh, President Stanley, your leadership of this institution, we all know now is going to lead this place to um, the limitless potential that you saw that that Marilyn and James saw in this place, and it's, uh, wow, it's so special, and I just want to be a help, and all of your legislative, co my legislative colleagues that are here um, want, want to help you do your job as best as possible, and, and you're doing a great job. To Chancellor Zimfer, um, same, same thing goes. There are so many people here that believe in this university, uh, that want to see you successful. I, I want to give a special thanks to Senator Ken Laval, who he can't be with us right now, but he has earned a legacy of being a great champion for higher education, and he's certainly here in spirit. To all my colleagues in government, it's, uh, it's a privilege to, to be here with you today. Stony Brook has always been a jewel of the SUNY system. It's one of the top research universities in the entire country. New York SUNY 2020 is going to ensure that students receive the best education with the nation's best resources and finest educators. This plan will ensure that this university conducts the most advanced research possible with the nation's most innovative, current technology and infrastructure. Today, this campus takes a giant, bold leap forward. This is partly due to the hard work of our governor and legislature with designing New York 2020, but this is also due to the vision, the love, and the generosity of James and Marilyn Simons and the Simons Foundation. Hopefully we all share the goal that we want to leave this place better than we found it. There's no greater purpose in life, in my opinion, of doing everything in your power, everything that's both positive and productive, to impact the lives of the people of this world. This campus and our state and our country are and will forever be improved thanks to the philanthropy of James and Marilyn Simons. I'd like to recognize our governor, my governor, for his leadership on this issue and for so many others throughout this year. I may be of a different political party, but I want him to be as successful as possible. My bias isn't uh, due to the fact that we both graduated from Albany Law School or both have beautiful twin daughters. Mine, uh, Michaela, um, had, we spell the name a little differently. Uh, as I'm listening to President Stanley talking about what this generosity is going to lead, it, we're talking about Alzheimer's, I think of my grandparents who struggled with Alzheimer's. I think of multiple sclerosis. My father, who struggled with multiple, multiple sclerosis. My daughter, Michaela, who was a stroke victim when she was only two weeks old. I root for our governor, not for those other biases, but because his success is our success as New Yorkers. It was governor's, Governor Cuomo's first year as governor, my first year as a state senator, and it was one of the most successful legislative years in our state's history. <laughs> that's, 
That's no accident or coincidence. We closed a $10 billion deficit. We balanced the budget on time. We cut spending for the first time in 15 years. We passed the nation's toughest property tax cap. And just last, last week, for millions of New Yorkers, we gave them tax relief. And we've begun the repeal of the MTA payroll tax. This governor has been more than just a partner. He's been a fearless leader. He um, is someone that I, I would say for, for me and my family, we didn't realize that we'd be rooting for just quite this hard. <laughs> he has shown that our, our state is capable of absolutely anything. When we aim high, we commit ourselves to these ambitious goals, and we find a way, any way, to meet the challenges that face our state. And I guess that's what NY SUNY 2020 is all about. That's what the generosity of James and Marilyn Simons is all about. It's about aiming high, committing yourself, and finding a way, any way, to meet the challenges that face our state. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. Thank you, um, everyone, for the role that you played for making today a reality. May God bless, continue, continue to bless this uh, great institution, our state, and our country. And it's at this time my honor to call back the great president of Stony Brook, Sam Stanley. So it is now my great pleasure to invite Jim and Marilyn Simons to the podium. a crowd. It's nice to see you all here. Thanks for coming to share this special event with us. I'm very grateful for the opportunity I had to go to Stony Brook. I was born and raised in Bayshore. My father was a brick subcontractor and he actually built a number of, um, did a lot of the brickwork here on campus. When I started school here, I commuted, and while my brother and my cousin went off to lay bricks, I went to my calculus recitation class. <laughs> so um, I have lots of fond memories of Stony Brook. I came here as an undergraduate, and I went on to complete my graduate education here. It was many wonderful years. I received a great education. I developed a much broader view of the world. I made many lifelong friends, and I even met my husband here. <laughs> so, Stony Brook has given me so much, and I'm very happy to be able to give something back. As we all know, giving back is important. It passes on to others the opportunities that we've had ourselves gives us a chance to spread our good fortune. This gift means more to me even than giving back though. It means investing in the future of our students here at Stony Brook, investing in public education, investing in research, investing in Long Island in New York. With this gift, I hope to see Stony Brook continue to strengthen and broaden and be all it can be. Thank you. first. It, it's always, <laughs> I, she's so difficult to talk. Well, I won't, I won't real, really try that. I'll just reminisce a little bit. I came here in 1968 at 30 to head the 
math department. Uh, I'd never had in anything before, so that was already an opportunity. Uh, not knowing quite what I was supposed to do, I went down to the dean's building and asked the dean, well, uh, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and he said, uh, well, you could put up a flag. So I took that to mean uh, do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> and I did it. Uh, <laughs> and it, uh, it worked great. Uh, <laughs> it worked great. We built a wonderful department in those days. It was uh, made a little bit easier by the condition that the university was in. Uh, th there, was, there was plenty of money. Uh, there was very good leadership with, uh, with John Tall. Uh, there was a, a, quite a good undergraduate student body. Uh, and uh, so it was a really fun place to be. I had the resources that I needed and a dean who let me do anything. Uh, so uh, after a while, I, I left the halls of academe and decided to go into business in 1976. Uh, which I did, but I kept my eye on Stony Brook. Uh, I, I really, I really liked it. And uh, over the years, uh, we contributed to the institution. I became chair of the of the foundation board, and uh, I really liked the place and and wished it well. But gradually, uh, indifferent state support uh, began to get me down. There wasn't uh, the kind of enthusiasm, certainly, uh, that there was under Rockefeller, but generally speaking, there just wasn't the kind of enthusiasm I felt was necessary if this institution was to flourish. And I began to be a little bit depressed that whatever gifts we might make uh, might not in the long run make that much of a difference. But uh, Elliot Spitzer became governor. And he assured me, personally, that he was committed to building the state university. And I really felt there was going to be a new era. And Marilyn and I decided to make the first of uh, these two very large gifts uh, to endow uh, and create the Center for Geometry and Physics, which is now on campus and, and flourishing, actually. And we had a, uh, a press conference, uh, not unlike this one, perhaps a little, little smaller, to announce that gift. Uh, the governor was there and so on. And uh, two days later, the, the governor had another kind of press conference. Which <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, not as happy an occasion. So uh, there, but we'd made the commitment, so the Center for Geometry and Physics was gonna go up willy-nilly but uh, that strong backing from the governor, at least that governor, was, uh, was not going to occur. Uh, was not going to occur. But on top of that, of course, uh, uh, within the next year, the state finances began to suffer with the economic uh, crisis that was developing the country. And David Patterson uh, uh, liked the university and, and wanted to help, but uh, it was very, very difficult in the university along with all state agencies, suffered, suffered cuts. In looking at the question of how this university and SUNY in general was going to survive these cuts and give all the kids uh, in the state what they deserved, it became clear that the tuition policy had to be changed somehow. Tuition had to be raised okay, holding harmless uh, the less advantaged kids to be sure, but tuition had to be raised because that was the only source of income that could possibly offset these cuts. And so um, I and others uh, started to try to encourage uh, the legislature and the governor to make that happen. We came pretty close, well, it felt close, I'm not sure how close it really was, under Governor Patterson. We succeeded in holding up the state budget for two months, uh, but in the end, uh, uh, the state finally passed its budget and a SUNY plan was, uh, was not in it. Um, when Governor Cuomo became elected, came into office, uh, we, we talked to him too. And 
wanted him to put SUNY reform in his budget. And he very wisely said no. Uh, the state has problems, financial problems that need to be dealt with. I don't want to put anything in that budget except what needs to be so that we can move on. And he said he would deal with this afterwards. And he did. I felt when he said that, well, you know, they say they'll do things afterwards, and maybe they will and maybe they won't. But this man did that. He followed through, and, you know, I had said to myself, and you know, Marilyn and I had said, that we would make this kind of a gift that we're making, a very substantial gift, but only if we could feel that the underpinnings for the uh, for this university were in place and that the university could grow. Well, uh, the governor uh, and uh, the legislature did their job and uh, we did ours. So now we're in, we're in really in great shape, I think. We have a, a plan, a 2020 plan, which has been extolled here and you all know its conditions and, and uh, it boosts the finances of the university. It's going to allow us to hire them, I guess, to hire, but I feel like part of it. Uh, another 250 faculty improve the student-teacher ratio considerably. Uh, with our gift, the uh, research side is going to be intended to, as well as some fellowships and so on and so forth. So the way I see it, the stars are now aligned. We have a solid financial base. We're flanked by two outstanding institutions, Brookhaven Labs east of us and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories west of us. And we have great leadership at this university today. Sam came, I was part of the search committee that hired him. I was so pleased that he agreed to come. He hired an outstanding dean of medicine who was just mentioned, Ken Kashansky. He hired an outstanding provost to replace the previous very good provost, uh, Dennis Asanis, who's come to join us. And he's demonstrated his capacity to bring in the best kind of people to the campus. So with these assets in place, I really have no doubt that within the next five, six, seven years, Stony Brook is going to join the ranks of America's and the world's truly great public universities. And I'm happy to be part of it. And so is Marilyn. Um, I, I've really run out of words. Um, I'll just say again, thank you so much, Jim and Marilyn. Um, I'd now like to introduce the Chancellor. Uh, as Chancellor of the State University of New York, Nancy Zimfer is the leader of the largest public higher education system in the United States. A dynamic executive and nationally recognized leader in higher education, her strategic plan, The Power of SUNY, has helped guide Stony Brook's efforts in economic development, the education pipeline, energy, and a healthy New York. Her commitment and leadership were instrumental in securing the passage of SUNY 2020 legislation that provides for a predictable tuition plan, and it's really been my pleasure and good fortune to be able to work with her for the past two and a half years. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming SUNY <laughs> Chancellor Nancy Zimpel. Thank you. Thank you. You see, I, I really know who you want to hear from, and it is my extraordinary privilege today to get to introduce the governor. But I would be remiss if I didn't say to Chairman Carl McCall and to Carrie Stoller, our trustee, this is a super day for the State University of New York. And Jim and Marilyn, you have made us beyond happy. This is a moment of time that we will cherish as long as we serve the State University of New York. And I just want you all to know what a privilege it is to be a part of this day. Sam Stanley is over the moon. He is a fabulous president. I know that. You know that. And uh, we are uh, a great partnership. 
So as I reflect on today, which is really kind of a trifecta, I mean, the good news, uh, for instance, Kevin Law, about Long Island receiving a leadership award for the Regional Economic Development Council, the passage of NY SUNY 2020, and the gracious and generous gift of Jim and Marilyn Simons makes this truly a moment in time. But Governor, I'm a real observer of leadership and have watched people lead in every imaginable position. And I've come to this little homemade theory. It really absolutely requires vision. If you don't have a big idea of where to take something like the great state of New York, you're not gonna be successful. And this governor has that vision. If you can't find a way to get everybody engaged, grassroots, all these regional economic development councils, you're not going to get the job done. And this governor figured that out. If you don't lay out a plan of very strategic actions, the ones that will grow from this gift and from NY SUNY 2020, we're just simply not going to be able to move the dial in New York, but we are going to move the dial in New York. And every leader Every leader has to pay attention to the pocketbook. It's got to grow. It's got to be an investment in our growth. And that I think the Simons understood, but clearly our governor understands. And then you have to travel around the state and the nation and the world and tirelessly tell the story that New York is open for business. I give you Governor Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Stony Brook. Good morning. Oh, it's not even a good. Oh, look at that. $150 million gets your blood running, does it? Uh, good morning to all of you. First to Chancellor, uh, Chancellor Nancy Zimfer. You hear that energy, you hear that spirit, and that le that's leadership. Give a round of applause to the great <laughs> Chancellor. SUNY has a new energy all across the state. There's a revitalization going on, and Nancy really embodies it. And her leadership has made such a difference, really infused all throughout the system. I can't thank her enough. Uh, SUNY also has a great chairperson of the board, Carl McCall. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Zeldin, Assemblyman Steve Engelbright, colleagues of mine and all the colleagues from the New York State Legislature, it's a pleasure to be with you, and they really did a fantastic job this year. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and to Jim and Marilyn. $150 million gift. Comes at a good time. I was doing my list for Santa, and I was wondering <laughs> what kind of gift would I want? I was thinking socks, actually. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's not a, a gift. And you listen to Jim, you listen to Marilyn. Uh, it wasn't a gift, and Jim, Jim gave you part of the backstory, but it, it, Jim is in the, not in the gift business. He is in the investment business, uh, and he places his money in places that are going to reap dividends. That's what he does. That's what he does extraordinarily well for many, many years. And he is investing in Stony Brook. And before he placed his investment, as he said here, he wanted to make sure there was a financial plan that made Stony Brook viable and that Stony Brook was going to reap dividends. And when we first started to talk, his entire discussion was about the non-sustainability of the SUNY system and the Stony Brook system and how it was deteriorating. And the SUNY system all across uh, the state, frankly, he was talking about the, uh, his disenchantment with dealing with uh, the state officials and the state government. By the way, I have, Jim, no press conference planned for two days. I want you to know. <laughs> The, so that was, that was a 
central point that he was making. How is the SUNY system going to work? And how is Stony Brook going to work? And how are the state's finances going to work? And what were we going to do about tuition? And how are they going to have the economic resources to compete? He said, and if that is in place, and if that system comes to be, then I will make my investment. And that's exactly what the state legislature did this past year, and that's what the SUNY system did. We have a new financial plan, that's SUNY 2020. A new financial plan, a new tuition plan that will have the financial security and success of not just Stony Brook, but all the SUNY system, SUNY schools system-wide. Uh, and then Jim said, well, now I'll make my investment. Uh, having said that, it was smart, it was wise, but it was also incredibly, incredibly generous. Uh, and we thank you, Jim and Marilyn, from the bottom of our heart for your generosity. Jim and Marilyn Simons, let's give them a round of applause. Let me say this, as Nancy said, uh, everything has been said, just not everyone has said it. Uh, usually, the circumstances about love or money. Today is no exception, and today is not about love. So I'm really here to sign the agreement so uh, we can get underway. Just let me say this, when we started one year ago, uh, and I took over as governor working in partnership with, with uh, my colleagues in the legislature, we had one focus, which was bringing the economy back to New York and turning the economy around and generating jobs. Why? Because on the statewide level, that's the best thing you can do. If the private sector economy is running, and if this state is generating jobs, then all is going to work out. The private sector economy is the engine that pulls the train. And if people have jobs and people have opportunity, the community is working. If you have a private sector economy, you have a tax base that's flourishing, we can invest, we can do good things, we can build public institutions all across the state. But we had to focus on turning around the economy. And that is a big job in New York. By the way, it's a big job all across the country. But it's particularly tough in New York because we had a reputation as being anti-business. And it wasn't just a perception issue. It was a reality issue. And we've been working all year long to turn around that reality, to then turn around the perception and say to businesses, take a second look at New York. You want to locate here. You want to grow here. This is a place for you and your business long term. And that's what we did in the first legislative session. Make the government work. Get your financial house in order. Balance the budget. Do it on time. Do it like grown-ups. Do it responsibly and send that signal. Get taxes out of con under control. Lee is exactly right. The property tax cap in Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk. Some of the highest property taxes in the nation are in New York. People are taking a second mortgage to pay their property taxes. And people are leaving because of property taxes. And you had exponential growth year after year after year, 7%, 8%, 9%. We passed a property tax cap that said 2% unless 60% of the people override. But the overall message was, we're changing the reality of New York and making it business friendly. We did that to the, a, an exponential degree last week when the legislature came back in what was called an extraordinary session. Extraordinary session is when the legislature comes back outside of the normal session. Normally the legislature sits from January to June. And they came back last week. It was an extraordinary session, but extraordinary in every way. Extraordinary circumstances, extraordinary times, and there was an extraordinary product. The senator is right, the assemblyman is right, the New York State Legislature did what they couldn't do in Washington. They put the politics aside, they stopped the arguing, they stopped the finger pointing, and they came together for the good of the people of this state. They passed the most aggressive jobs development program passed in modern political history. They passed a tax reform plan that is actually rolling back taxes on small business with the MTA tax reform. And the middle class is going to pay the lowest tax rate in 58 years, believe it or not. That's how you stimulate the economy.
Everyone agrees if you do a tax cut to the middle class who will actually spend the money, you're going to see that investment reap dividends in the private sector economy. So we've been doing what we need to do on the state level. We also understand that for the economy to really take off, there is no one state economy. This is not a postage stamp size state. This is not a vanilla state, as they say. Our, our strength is our diversity. And our economy works in regional economies. There's the Western New York economy, which is different than the North Country, the Adirondack economy, which is different than Central New York, which is different than Long Island. And if you want to grow the Long Island economy, you have to do it from Long Island. And there are a different set of particular assets and liabilities that Long Island has, and you have to come up with a plan that develops that economy from a bottom-up basis. And we started a competition called Regional Economic Councils, where we said to regions across the state, you come up with a plan. If it makes sense, the state will invest in it. And Long Island came together in a way I hadn't seen it, frankly, in my lifetime. And they came together, and they came up with an economic plan, and everybody cooperated, and everybody participated, and the state awarded Long Island $100 million last week for economic <laughs> development. And the catalyst for all these regional economies, I believe, is going to be the Sunni system. Why? Because if you look at any region in the country where the economy is coming back, I don't care if it's the Research Triangle or Silicon Valley, it's always linked to higher ed. It's always linked. The higher ed system is always the incubator. It's always transferring work product to the commercial se sector. And we have a great asset in this state, in our SUNY system. Jim is right. We haven't developed it. We haven't exploited it. Uh, we haven't given it the attention that it deserves in recent history, but it is a great, great, beautiful asset. So in all these regions, the Sunni system is the heart of the region and the heart of the economic rebirth, and here on Long Island. Stony Brook says that in, in volumes. Stony Brook is not just a great academic institution, but it is also a great economic generator for Long Island. The agreement we make today is great for the school, it's great for the students, it's great for academia, it's great for all of Long Island because you're going to see this economy work and Stony Brook is going to be a major engine in that economic resurgence and I can't tell you how proud I am to be part of it. If I had told you a year ago, because now we're getting down to the end of the year and I'm a little reflective, it's the end of my first year, my rookie year, where my colleagues in the legislature were very kind in showing me the ropes, <laughs> sometimes at great expense to me. <laughs> but uh, we're coming into the holiday season, and it, it is a time of reflection. If I had said to you a year ago that the New York State Legislature was going to be one of the premier legislatures in the nation in putting aside politics and actually acting, if I had told you all of Long Island was going to come together and get past the geographic divides and the political divides, and they were all going to cooperate on one plan for the good of Long Island and not act in any parochial way, if I was to tell you that there was going to be a great family, the Simons family, who was going to step up and give a $150 million investment to Stony Brook out of the pure generosity and goodwill of their heart, if I had told you all of those things, you'd be a little dubious, a little incredulous. They all came true. And you know what else? The best is yet to be. I really believe that. Thank you, and God bless you.
So it was about 54 years ago when then Governor Nelson Rockefeller and the State Board of Regents challenged the leaders of Stony Brook to build a university that would stand with the finest in the country. I speak for the entire Stony Brook family in expressing our eternal gratitude to Jim and Marilyn for their remarkable vision and their generosity, and to Governor Cuomo, the Long Island Legislative Delegation, and Chancellor Zimfer for their leadership. This concludes our program. Thank you so much.